Hello everyone, welcome to this free CCNA course. My name is Ahmed Inaya, and in this video, I will give an introduction about CCNA, about this course outline, and about networking in general. CCNA stands for Cisco Certified Network Associate. It is the first level in Cisco certification path. In the previous years, there were multiple CCNA tracks. But in February 2020, Cisco retired multiple CCNA and CCDA certifications. CCDA stands for Cisco Certified Design Associate, which was a separate track related to design and architecture only. These tracks, including CCNA and CCDA, were consolidated into one new CCNA 200-301 exam. This makes it easier for entry-level engineer, this makes it easier for entry-level engineer to get one certificate that covers multiple areas of technology. So these are the previous tracks of CCNA. Before February 2020, there were CCNA Wireless, CCNA Cloud, CCNA Collaboration, CCNA Data Center, CCNA Industrial, CCNA Routing and Switching, CCNA Security, and CCNA service provider. All these tracks, in addition to CCDA, were all consolidated into one certificate, which is Cisco CCNA 200-301 certification. So since that date, February 24, 2020, Cisco offers only one certificate for CCNA, which is 200-301. This was reflected into exam topics for this certification. So exam topics right now covers different area of technology or different areas of networking, including network fundamentals, network access, IP connectivity, IP services, security fundamentals, and automation and programmability. The weight for each subject is different and ranges from 20% for some topics 10% for others, and 25% for topics like IB connectivity. The details of each topic and the exact technologies covered in this exam are included in this link here, which provides details about technologies, protocols, and areas covered under each one of these topics. In addition to exam topics, Cisco Press also issued CCNA New Official Certification Guide, which should provide detailed description about topics covered in this exam. If you are a person who prefers to have reference material in printed format or digital format, I suggest you go for this link and verify the options to have this book in printed or in digital format. While preparing this course, I read this book thoroughly to make sure that I cover the main topics and main technologies that are part of CCNA exam. In this exam, Cisco retired a few technologies and introduced new ones and that's why I think it is a good idea to take a look into this official certification guide before going into the exam. When it comes to the schedule of this course, I divided it into 5 days to be in line with typical in-class course. I will be recording this material over multiple weeks and I will have the videos divided into parts. Each part will be numbered or labeled with day number and part number to make it easy for you to know the sequence of these videos and to follow through this course over multiple days. I really suggest you study the course material over the same number of days I suggest in this course and to spend enough time studying the labs and doing them multiple times to make sure that you master the material before you jump to the next day. So in day one, I'll start by talking about network fundamentals, which I will do in this video. Then I will discuss the switching by talking about Ethernet, VLANs, and spanning tree. In day two, we'll talk about IPv4 addressing and subnets. And after that, I'll talk about IP routing, which is an important subject in networking. In day three, I will talk about IPv6, which is a new version of IP protocol. Then I'll talk about wireless LAN and how to configure SSIDs and Cisco controllers. And then I'll talk about IP access list in the rest of day three. 
In day four, I will talk about IP services and I will talk about security fundamentals, which is an important subject in networking and in security. In day five, I will talk about network design, which is somehow a short version of Cisco CCDA certification, which is related to design and architecture. And in the last part of day five, I will talk about automation and programmability. When it comes to the lab, it is always preferred to have your physical equipment, but if you don't have your own physical lab, you still can use a free software from Cisco, which is Cisco Packet Tracer. I will use Packet Tracer in my labs to make it easy for you to follow through and to guide you through different labs of this course. The steps and requirements to download this software are detailed in Cisco Network Academy website. I provided the link here to download this link. Before downloading, Cisco requires you to register for Packet Tracer course, which is a good course to attend if you are interested. But once you register, you will get access to the software and you will be able to download it and run it in your system. You don't need to be an expert in this software to complete the labs for this course, as I will explain in details how to complete the steps of each lab. But before starting this course, I really suggest you download the software and install it in your device to be ready for the labs in the coming videos. There are many CCNA courses out of the market, and that's why I try to focus on certain strategy to make sure that my courses satisfies your needs. I tried to follow interactive learning mode by focusing on real life problems and how networks can solve them. I try as much as I can to engage you in these courses and to make them interactive as much as I can. When talking about theory, I try to have the labs immediately after the theory and to have them in parallel as much as I can. I try to optimize the time by focusing on ideas and explaining them in a clear way to save you the time rather than explaining the ideas multiple times using different ways. I try to focus on technology more than marketing. If you feel that the speed of this course is faster than what you need, you can pause or slow the video at any time. And this is the beauty of YouTube or on-demand learning because you can watch the videos at your own pace. I try to make my content as much visual as I can to keep you engaged and to grasp your attention throughout the course. So let's jump to the first topic of this course, which is what is a computer network? Computer network can be defined as interconnection between devices or hosts to share services. So before any computer network exists, there should be services offered over this network. So let's assume we have a small network with one device and one printer. The printer offer one service, which is printing service. And this device or this client is trying to get this print service to print certain documents. We can simply connect this PC to this printer by direct cable. And this way, this device can print in this printer at any time without the need of any network. But let's assume we have many devices in this network and not only one. And also we have many services in this network. We have database service. We have surveillance or monitoring service offered by these cameras. And we have multiple devices that need to access these services. In this case, we cannot connect every and each device to every and each service directly. We need some sort of network to connect all these devices together. Usually, we call every device as a host when it connects the network and every host can be a client or a server. So for example, database server is a server that offers databases or file services. And these devices are clients that needs to access to this server to get certain service. The definition of a client and server is not fixed per devices. So for example, this device can be a client when downloading files from the server but at the same time, it can work as a server for other devices that needs to access certain files on this device. So the same device can work as a client on certain connections and can work as a server for other connections. So the definition of client and server is not fixed, but it is dynamic based on the connection and who is offering the service over this connection. 
but the name host identifies a device that connects to the network regardless of being a client or a server. Now when connecting all these devices to the network, there is a challenge of interoperability between them, which means we need to have a common language or common standard or protocols that manage communication between these devices. In early days, every network vendor created its own standard and we used to have different networks isolated from each other because they are from different vendors. But this limited network capability to expand and to provide more services and interconnecting different networks from different vendors was a challenge at that time. Later on, different independent organizations started to create standards and models to provide interoperability between different vendors. And in this module, I'll talk mainly about two main models when it comes to networking. I will talk about iOS model, which was common in early days of networking. And I will talk about TCP IP model, which is more common now. And this model is part of CCNA 200-301 exam. Let's start by talking about OSI model. The idea of any model is to provide a standard way for hosts to communicate with each other over the network and to provide interoperability between these hosts. So it all starts by the application. Let's assume we have one application here in this host that needs to send data to different hosts in the network. So data is generated at application layer and this layer divides the data into smaller pieces as we can see in this box here. This data is a group of bits and bytes that are ready to be sent over the network to another host in the network. OSI model says that every layer encapsulates the data to create a PDU, which is a protocol data unit. So application layer adds this header, layer 7 header, to create layer 7 BDU. This BDU can be understood only by application layer in another host, but cannot be sent over the network directly. It must go through multiple stages before being sent into the network. So in the first stage, this L7 BDU goes to presentation layer, where presentation layer adds another header to make this data understood by presentation layer in the other host. The same process repeats, and presentation layer sends the data and header to session layer, where session layer adds layer 5 header to create L5 BDU. Then session layer sends the same data with header to layer 4 transport to add another header. Every layer of these has certain function and certain interface to communicate with higher layers and lower layers. Many applications were not able to fit into these layers and in many cases these layers and these functions were not strictly followed. I will not discuss the details of each layer and each function because this model is not followed currently and in CCNA course we will focus more in the next model which is TCP IP model. When data reaches layer 2 which is data link layer it adds layer 2 header and also it adds layer 2 trailer. The function of layer 2 trailer is to discover any error while sending the data over the wire. The function of physical layer is to send this data or this layer 2 PDU as a stream of bits over the network to the other host. This process of adding headers is called encapsulation and it is very important in networking devices because networking devices don't care about the exact data, it cares mainly about the header to be able to process the data and forward it over the network. So when sending this data over the wire, it still has different headers from different layers and they are all and they are all encapsulated on top of each other and sent over the network to the other host. The other host will do the opposite. So layer 2 will look into layer 2 header, then will decapsulate it, then layer 3 will look into this header and decapsulate it, and so on, until the application layer receives the data and process it by the application. Currently, TCP IP model is the model used by network devices, and this is the model that's part of CCNA course. There are many similarities between TCP IP model and OSI model, and the main difference between them is in the three high layers of OSI model. In TCP IP model, these three layers are replaced by one layer which is 
application layer and the other four layers are similar to OSI model. When it comes to encapsulation, similar methodology is used in TCP IP model as in OSI model. So it starts by data that's created by application layer. Then this data is sent to transport layer that adds TCP header to create a segment. So the BTU at the transport layer is called a segment. This segment is sent to network layer where network layer adds another header which is IP header to create a packet. So the PDU at network layer is called a packet. This packet is sent over to data link layer where it adds a header and a trailer similar to OSI model to create a frame and then physical layer sends this frame as a stream of bits over the network to other hosts in the network. So same as OSI model, if we look into the frame, we still can see data link header, IP header, and TCP header sent with the data in addition to data link trailer. And in the same way, when the other host receives this data, it starts by processing data link layer by layer two or by data link layer, and then it process IP header before decapsulating the header and send TCP header and data to transport layer. Then transport layer decapsulate this header and send the data to the application for processing. So this is the concept of models and how models can help in sending the data in a standard way from one host to another to provide interoperability between different hosts in the network. When it comes to network devices, different network devices works at different layers of TCP IP model. So if we start at physical layer, we have cables and hubs that work at this layer. At data link layer, we have switches as the main devices that work at data link layer. For network layer or IP layer, we have routers and layer three switches that work at this layer. When it comes to transport layer, we have mainly firewalls that work at this layer. And for application layer, we have next generation firewalls that have the intelligence to work at this layer. We will talk about these devices and these layers in more details in the coming videos, but for this video, it is enough to understand that we have different layers and what are the devices and PDU names we have at each layer. If you find this video useful, please support me by like, comment below, share, and subscribe to my channel to receive my future videos. Thank you and have a good day.